Hi guys, Gabi from Your Path Hacks here. My first video on SAP Buppies came out one year ago in March last year. I remember my journey back then to get my first SAP Buppy working in Your Path. It took me almost two months and multiple calls with SAP ABAP experts and support from Your Path. Now Your Path have just released their SAP accelerators with dozens of SAP Buppy templates that can be readily used. I picked up the Buppy for creating purchase acquisitions and in two hours instead of two months, I made it work. Stay tuned to find out how. Okay, so to get accelerators, you first have to go to the Your Path Marketplace and select the SAP section. Then choose the business area you're interested in. You can choose between basis administration, finance, manufacturing, procurement or sales. I come from procurement, so the choice for my first test was simple. You can choose between the SAP ECC and the S4 HANA versions. And you have to also download the foundation pack regardless of the actual BAPI you want to use. The foundation pack contains all the logic that is common regardless of the BAPI, and the BAPI specific templates are only then containing the specific details that differ BAPI to BAPI. So the first thing you have to do is know if you're on SAP ECC or SAP S4 HANA, and download the specific packages from Marketplace. I was testing on SAP S4 HANA, and by mistake, I downloaded the ECC version and it still worked. I tested the BAPI requisition create, but this will probably not work for any other BAPI. So just try to make note of the system version you have and download the right package. As an intermediate step, I recommend that you read the documentation. So if you go to Foundation Pack for accelerators, I recommend you at least read the manual for your path accelerators for SAP BAPI PDF. And if you later on encounter issues, refer also to the FAQ manual for your path accelerators for SAP. It will take you around 30 minutes, but they will be well invested. So the second step after you download the packages is to copy the foundation pack in a new folder, maybe rename it, and then copy the specific BAPI folder you want to try out inside the foundation pack folder. So this folder was originating in the source of the accelerators for procurement. So I copied it from here and paste it inside your test folder where you've copied already the foundation pack files. So everything is foundation pack except this folder, which is the specific BAPI. All right, third step, fill in the argument Excel file. If we go back to the sources inside this requisition create, in data, there was an argument file, which I've already copied. So going back, I've, I've cut the file from here and I've copied it in a data folder of the parent. So just move the argument file from the BAPI specific folder to the foundation pack folder. So inside here. This basically contains the SAP connection parameters plus some other already predefined data. Make sure you fill in the client, the application server's IP address. For security reasons, I've taken it out. The system ID, uh, the system number, and the SNC mode should be zero if you don't use SNC or one if you do. The fourth step is to maintain the business data. That's contained in the puppy specific folder. And it's this Excel file. In my case, I tested with creating a purchase acquisition via BAPI, so I had to provide some mandatory information that would make up the PR. That can be done in the SAP BAPI acquisition create v2.2 EN Excel file. Here it was a bit confusing for me, and I had to start reading the implementation of the accelerator to understand the error I got and what I was missing. I started with creating a data row for the requisition items, so it's line number five here, and I thought that that would be enough but apparently I also had to create a data row in the BAPI requisition create sheet, and that was not apparent. 
So let me see, basically, I have to fill in the data, the business data here in this Excel file. I have to fill in the SAP connection arguments and just copy the folders. And then to run the file, we can open the sample SRC BAPI register. I have it open already here. And before running this, we have to make sure we have the SAP BAPI package installed. So we go to manage packages and we should have this package here installed. And the prerequisites for running BAPIs with UiPath are very well detailed in the manual for UiPath accelerators for sub BAPIs. The UiPath side and SAP side are very well detailed here. So let's run it now. This workflow is meant for testing, so it has a few prompts to the user. Basically, we have to point to the parameter file with the arguments, what we just filled out before. So that's the right file with BAPI acquisition create. We say OK. Then we have to give in our SAP user and our SAP password for the connection. And now the BAPI will run. And we get the success message at the end. Now let's check the log file for the details. And we can do it in src common log and we have the log of today right here we can see the date the time and what happened and we have here the message purchase requisition number created so it has been a success we can see the pr in sap as well we can go to transaction me5a for example i will select the held prs because it's not approved yet point for this plant And this is it, this should be my PR of today. So going back, ME53N. And here's the PR we have created today. That was pretty simple, right? Well provided we know what we should fill in for the business data. If you're not sure, there's always trial and error, or as I've recently learned myself, the function module documentation in SAP. If you have the right in SAP, you can access it via transaction SC37. Just give the BAPI's name, press on display, and then press the function module documentation. And at the bottom of the page, you have information on many of the parameters accepted by the BAPI, and you can drill down on some of them. For example, I had no idea what skip 40 items meant, and I can find some help here and you can drill down on all the orange items. All right, now if you are new to SAP BAPIs and to the accelerators, there might be hiccups on the road to you running your first successful BAPI. Just remember to read the documentation and the FAQ PDF, and the accelerators make it much simpler than it was before, but they are still not walking the park yet. So if you get stuck anywhere, it would be useful if you would be somewhat accustomed to the implementation of the accelerators. The main workflow is the sample SRC BAPI register XAML. This is basically a placeholder for running the SRC BAPI register workflow right at the end. After querying the user for the argument file and the SAP username and password. Now this SRC BAPI register workflow calls a lot of other workflows First, it reads the config file, which is actually the arguments file, which we've seen before with the connection details. Then it checks the arguments. It basically checks if any of the mandatory fields are missed out. And in that case, it will throw a business rule exception at the end. The add argument key workflow this updates the IO underscore config and the IO underscore options dictionaries with blank values if they are not provided in the arguments Excel file. So if something is left out there, the respective value of that key inside the dictionary is replaced with blank. The next one, the load Excel data workflow, reads the business data basically all sheets minus src underscore contents and the log sheet the src underscore contents sheet is just listing 
the imports and the tables of the BAPI and the SRC log sheet is just self-explanatory. So it removes these sheets and then it creates a dictionary out of it and basically the key in the dictionary would be the sheet name and the value would be the data table with the values from the Excel file. The check required field workflow. This is throwing a business exception if there are no rows in the business data Excel file. And this actually helped me in my first test because it pointed to me I had to fill in a row on one of the first sheets which I had left out. So just a reminder if the user didn't fill in all the required sheets. The next workflow, the get name and data type, is passed over the data table corresponding to the sheet with the same name in the BAPIs, that's the EMDT BAPI name sheet, and it then reads through this data table and converts it to a dictionary where the key is the column name and the value is the value maintained by the user on the added row. So in our example, we talk about this sheet, it creates a dictionary with these column names as the keys and these values here entered by the user as the values for those keys. So after setting the row that contains the data right here, so it's basically skipping the header rows, then the execute BAPI workflow is called inside an SAP application scope. And it's important to understand some of the arguments. If we open them here, the target item info one is in the output of the get name and data type workflow and is a dictionary created from the data table of the sheet with the name of the BAPI. The properties of the SAP application scope are filled in from the config file and the connection is saved under the SAP service variable of type iConnection service and then it's further used in calling the execute BAPI workflow. And the input data sheet contains the dictionary of all the sheets and the data tables read in the load Excel data workflow. Okay, now back to execute BAPI workflow. This basically loops through the target item info dictionary and calls a create argument workflow for each of them. And this workflow is basically just a big switch activity, which calls other workflows like, for example, get value from data row or for the data row or table, it calls the um, copy data row to data table workflow or delete column workflow. And just to keep things high level here, this workflow gets the arguments for the BAPI in the IO import and IO data table dictionaries. And afterwards, it checks the levels of authority. And if the user is authorized, then it calls here the particular BAPI used on the call workflow path defined in the argument file. So we have here in config call workflow path to string, and that's what we have here in the call workflow path field in the argument file. So in this case, it's the BAPI requisition create XAML file. And in the end, it writes the BAPI logs and it commits as well to save the data in SAP. That's it. It has been quite a long, in-depth video, but I hope you have found it useful and that it would save you a lot of time with your BAPI implementations. We have seen step-by-step step how to download and configure one example UiPath SAP Accelerator, and we have talked about manuals and what to do if you run into issues. And at the end, I've provided a high-level walkthrough for the implementation of the foundation pack for SAP accelerators. To get a first understanding on how this all works. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to support the channel and be informed of future uploads, please subscribe and click the notification bell. Thank you for watching and have a great day.